Hello there. Have you come to join me in doing some math today? My name is Mrs. Dillon, and I want you to know if you've been doing these videos, Mrs. Hauser is a really good friend of mine, and she said that you are so good at math. I just can't wait for us to work on it together. Don't you think math is so much fun? I'm going to get us started with some handy dandy little cards. And I bet that as I'm placing my cards on the table, you can guess what's going to come next. That's one of the things I love about numbers is there can be sometimes some predictability. Sometimes we have patterns we can look for. Now in this case, you're probably just counting. What is the last one you think I'm going to put down? Did you say nine? You got it. But guess what? I still have one more card in my hand. Hmm. What do you think I'm going to put down next? Did you say 10? If you did, that would be a really good guess. But look and see what number I'm going to put down instead. Zero. Zero is a number we don't often talk and think about, but it's so important. Now I'm going to give you a new word for all of these. I'm even just going to write it above. I wonder if you ever refer when you're doing math to the digits. These are the digits that we need to make any number in the world. We can make numbers into the billions with just these 10 digits. So when we're talking about number, what we really mean is the value. So if I say four, and I mean four of something, that's the value of it. But if I'm simply talking about this written shape, then I'm talking about a digit. And we'll get into that more as we go, but I wanted to make sure we had a chance to talk about that. I've got some items here in my trays. When you look at the amount of items I have, do you think that I have more or less than nine? We're going to find out. Now, I'm not going to use all of my items. Let's say, let's sprinkle out some of them. So we want to have a really good way for organizing our items and thinking about them in regards to how many there might be. It's always fun to make an estimate too. How many do you think we have? I don't know because I haven't counted them yet, but that's what we're going to do right now. You know what else I love is my tens frame. My tens frame makes me feel really organized and really helps me think about the numbers that I have in front of me. So if I have, let's say more than nine or 10, I am going to need more than one tens frame, aren't I? I'm going to come over here. Let's see how many we have all together. I really don't know, but I'm starting to see. Can you see? Oh, and you know what? I wanna change this a little, just like that. It makes it easy for me to see that this is five, 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 and two more. But in this frame here, I've got a total of 10, five, 10 and five is 15, 16, 17. I can see that easily. So now I wanna talk about using digits to write the number 17. So help me out here. When I use um, my, my tools here to help me think about a certain number, then I'm going to say, well, how many do I have? And I love to look at the ones and the tens. How many ones can you see I have there? This tens frame is not complete, so those are ones. And I bet that you were able to see 
that there were seven ones. So we can record the digit seven in the ones column. Now, how many tens do I have? I just have one 10 frame that's complete. So just one 10. I'm going to use the digit one recorded in the tens column. Now I know that one 10 and seven ones equals 17. So that's how we can use digits to help us record a number. What about if I were to, I don't know where these people are going. Maybe they're going into town to have a snack. What have I done? I took away all the people in the ones column. So I need a different digit, don't I? We talked about this digit a minute ago. How many ones do I have? I don't have any. What digit do I use to represent that? Zero. I think it's really important for us to know when we're talking about the number 10 that what we mean is zero ones and one 10. That's why the number 10 looks this way. Alrighty, let's do another fun activity. I hope that you have your Unifix cubes nearby. These are one of my favorite things to play with. I hope that your home teacher also has just dumped some Unifix cubes out for you. Can you estimate how many cubes I have here? Does it look like it's more than nine? Do you think that it's less than 100? Let's find out. First of all, it's really helpful to organize our tools and see um, sort of the easiest way to count them. Now, what if I were to count them out by ones? One, two, three. <laughs> we would be here for a while, wouldn't we? Can you think of another way that's a little easier to organize and count these Unifix cubes? I'm gonna wait till you think about it. Did you say that we could count by tens? I love that idea. That will help it go quickly. So at home, click together 10 of your Unifix cubes and I'll click together 10 of mine and then let's pause for a moment. So I've got these three here. If I already have three, how many more am I going to use to get to 10? Did you say seven? Now that looks like five, doesn't it? Let's check our work. Do we have 10? Two, four, six, eight, 10. We've got 10. So what I like to do is use this now as a measurement when I click these together. I don't even need to count. I'm just going to click my cubes together as quickly as I can, and every now and then I'm gonna measure. Nope, not there yet. I have to click some more together. And in the meantime, I'm thinking, was my estimate close? Oh, how many more do I need? Just one more. Now, how many tens have I got so far? Two tens. We're just gonna set those there, and I'm gonna keep on clicking. This is a nice way for us to organize our material to count it up. And you know, 10, it's one of the friendliest numbers I just love to work with 10. And I hope you're gonna to get to be good friends with 10 also. Hey, I did the same thing last time. I got nine clicked together and I need one more. What do you think? Do you think we'll be making another 10 with these loose cubes? Probably not. Let's just make a column of the loose cubes and see how many we have. One, two, three, four, five. I love to work in the shape of a tens frame, so I'm gonna put my other one up there. Let's count what we have. We have 10, 20, 30. Now we can count these by ones, or we can group them. Let's start off with counting by ones. 31, I'm counting on. 32, 33, 34, 35, 36. Is that how many you saw when you were looking at them? The other way we could have done it is if we know and remember that half of a tens frame is five, I could say 10, 20, 30, 35, and one more is 36. So we're going to use another tool that's really similar to our Unifix cubes. 
It's a little smaller, our base 10 blocks. So make sure you have those nearby. Now I can just remember that this rod equals 10 and I can always use it and count it as 10. So we're going to do that a little bit together. I hope you have your place value mat near. How about we build the number 42? Could you build 42 on your place value mat? I don't mind if you start with the ones column. How many ones are there in the number 42? Just two little ones. How many tens are in the number 42? Let's see if you got the same answer as me. Not done yet, am I? And one more 10. Four tens and two ones. Let's go ahead and write that out with our digits. I'll use the digit two for the ones column and the digit four for the tens column. 42. This number is 42. I first want you to imagine what's two more than 42. Imagine it, hold it in your mind. Now let's check it. Let's use our tools and check it out. I put two more. Did you say that two more than 42 is 44? You got it. Okay, let's work with one this time and say one less. What's one less than 44? Because we've built 44, what's one less than that? Imagine it first. Take one away. Did you say 43? Excellent. That was some really good mental math that you did with me today. Thank you for joining me in that. Now the last thing I want to do today is talk to you about the importance of spelling our numbers correctly. I want us to read the numbers together and then I'm going to see if you can spell some of them. Now, when I look at the number one, I think it's so tricky because what's the sound you hear at the beginning? W, w, one. Oh my goodness, there's no W in the word one. O-N-E is a word we really just have to get memorized. Oh my goodness, why are they so tricky? This is the number two, but it looks like twa. There's no w, w in the word two. There's just that silent W that we have to get used to. Three is a little more straightforward. Re, we use those two E's to make the long E. Now four is a little tricky with that U in there. We have to get used to F-O-U-R. Huh, five is my friend, it looks so simple. I've got a silent E there that's gonna make that I say its name. Really easy for six. All the letters make the sounds that you would think they would make. Seven is a little tricky because we have to remember to get that E in there. Oh my gosh, hold your horses. <laughs> Eight is as tricky as it gets. The only letter that really tells us what we think it would say is the T at the end. Again, this is a spelling pattern we just have to memorize and get used to. E-I-G-H-T. Again, nine, it's a pretty friendly one. Nine and five in line together. And finally, ha, whew, we come to 10, T-E-N. Now at home in your books, you're going to go over some of the other numbers and their spelling. But let's do a silly little activity together. I want you to have your paper and pencil nearby, and I'm going to give you a tricky number to spell, and I want you to write down what you think it is, and then take a look at my number and see if you got close. Those will be the numbers that you're gonna to wanna to go back and correct if you didn't get them correctly, okay? So, I'm gonna pull one of my numbers. What do I wanna say here? Okay, I want you to think about and write how do we spell 14. I'm going to wait while you spell it. There might be a hint right here on the table. Okay. Let's take a look at mine and you check it out with yours. Is this how you spelled 14? Remember how we talked about there's a U in the number four and teen has two E's. 14. I'm gonna do two more with you. If you didn't get it correct, go ahead and correct it. Now I'd like you to spell the number 17. Sort of similar to our last one. Let's see. Does yours look like this? S-E-V-E. 
E-N spells seven, and there we are at that teen again, T-E-E-N. Okay. If you didn't get it correct, you're just going to correct it. Over time, we want you to be able to spell all the numbers correctly, and you're going to get lots of chance to practice that this year. So today's just an intro to that thought. The last number I'd like you to write is 20. Now, people love to say 20, 21, 27, but the number is 20, and that might help you with the spelling. Alrighty, let's see how you did. 20, T-W-E-N-T-Y. Did you get it correct? If you need to make a correction on your paper, do that, and don't worry. We're just going to keep practicing and you'll get it right eventually. Alrighty, now I hope you have a great day doing that, and I'll see you here next time.